In this video, you'll actually start saving data, specifically the representation of data that you'll use with the Foundation framework. Foundation's data structure wraps up a buffer of bytes, that is, a region of memory, in a way that makes it easy for us to read and write those bytes. Talking about data can get a little confusing because the term is overloaded. In Swift, we use this foundation type with the name data, but the bytes it uses themselves can be considered data in general computer science terms. Effectively though, as you'll see in the demo, you can work with a data instance just as if it were an array of bytes. And of course, data has other capabilities as well, relevant to saving. In modern computer architectures, the smallest unit of data you can address is a byte, which comprises eight bits. Accordingly, in Swift, a byte is represented using the uint8 structure, whose name is short for 8-bit unsigned integer. With 8 bits, the range of values you've got available per byte is 2 to the 8th power, which is 256. They start at 0 and go to 255. You won't normally need to directly type out the numerical values of a data, but you should be familiar with what that would look like in order to have a better understanding of the mechanics of saving. By default, when you use an integer literal in Swift, it's in base 10, a decimal number. So you can directly use 0 to 255. But you can prefix your integers as well to change their base. If you use the 0b prefix, you're working with a base 2 literal. The b is for binary, which only uses 0 and 1 for digits. In decimal, we need 3 digits to express the full range of a byte. But in binary, we need 8. So it's easier to read if you split the number up with an underscore every four bits. A group of four bits is known as a nibble, and it's often represented using a base 16, also known as hexadecimal, or just hex digit. Every nibble in decimal is a value between 0 and 15 inclusive. Past the number 9, we use the first six letters of the alphabet for hex literals, and the prefix for hex is 0x. Now that we're learning about the relationship between data and bytes, I've created an array of mysterious bytes. Shortly, we'll be saving them to your mystery data URL. I used all three types of integer literals I just went over. Everything in this column is 240 in decimal. These are all 159, and these are 152. You should be able to make more sense out of what that means in the next video. For now, let's finally save something. First, create a new instance of data. I'll call it mystery data. Helpfully, there's an initializer that's ready for an array of bytes like we have. And data has a write method that takes a URL. As you can see from the compilation error, writing will throw an error if it doesn't succeed, so you need to try beforehand. And now we know this write succeeded for two reasons. One, you see other readouts in the sidebar down below, if an error was thrown that wouldn't happen in a playground. And two, we can go to the mystery data URL and see that we've got a mysterious file written to our document directory. Let's read it back. To do that, Data has an initializer that works with the contents of a URL. I'll store the data as saved mystery data. If there's no data at the URL you specify, attempting to read would throw an error, so you need a try here as well. That error could happen if your URL represented a directory, for example, instead of a file. To get our numbers back, we can just use the array initializer that accepts a data instance. It looks right. The type is right too, uint8 array. Let's have Swift verify that the saved mystery bytes are equal to the original mystery bytes above. They are. 
And like I said in this video's introduction, you can mostly treat data as just like arrays of bytes. So you can equate two of them directly, and get the same result as equating their conversions to byte arrays.